This is yet another video request, this time for YouTube user Weasel2HTM, who asked to see more of my 220 or 240 volt furnace fan. I could do this the serious way, or I could do it the humorous one. I guess we'll try the humorous one first. Um, <laughs> growing up, this furnace fan knew it was different from its 120 volt and 120 220 volt capable brethren. This one was only interested in 240 volts AC. And that's all it will run on. Now this thing came, switching over to the serious side here, this thing came out of a restaurant and it was part of a, it was part of a ceiling mounted furnace that served a bunch of uh, in-ceiling air vents and then there was a return back in the kitchen of the place. Well, the, uh, the roof leaked after the restaurant closed and the ceiling fell in and left the furnace hanging there. And when the roofers were around, not only did they throw all the condensing units off of the roof, which was kind of unfortunate because that completely wrecked them, and I'm sure that most of them were perfectly fine, you know, probably could have been resold to someone looking to buy a used air conditioning condenser. I don't know what became of the furnaces because I never saw them whole, but I would assume they were ripped out and this is the one fan that I was able to salvage. So five dollars later, this fan was mine. And I did not know what voltage it ran on at the time. All I knew for sure is that because of the wiring harness here, that it was a multi-speed motor and of course made by General Electric. It is of course direct drive as opposed to belt drive. I kind of like the direct drive furnace fans because they are wicked fast, the very most of them. And for the most part, this thing's not in too terrible of a shape. Obviously, I need to screw the ground wire back down at some point. But I'll do that at some point in the future. And right now, I would say the motor is probably adequately grounded through its, uh, through its mountings because these bolts do go through to metal. And there is some contact here in the middle. It's not perfect, but it probably do. Um, the structural integrity of this thing, it's a little bit out of square, probably because it, too, was thrown around a bit. And so sometimes the... Uh, the fan, as you can see, is rather close right now to rubbing on the on the metal body of the cage. And if you shift it around just right, it will rub. And I've played with the mounting a little bit, and I don't have it perfect, but that's pretty good for a compromise position. Anyway, it needs some screws. It needs some help. It could use a good cleaning up. But it does run. And like I say, at first I thought, well, you know, a fan this small is probably going to be a 120-volt motor. But it's not, so I had to get a hold of one of these. A 500 watt step up and step down transformer, China's finest light fuse brand. And despite the fact that this thing was suspiciously cheap, it's actually quite well made and has held up extremely well to a lot of time spent running this fan. So, I'll go ahead and give you a demonstration here on some of the various speeds and stuff and show you what this thing is capable of. Now before I go ahead and get started with this demonstration, there are a couple things I want to point out. First of all, as always, if you're planning on doing something like this yourself, you treat electricity with respect and you employ appropriate safety measures and you make sure that you've wired things correctly because it doesn't take too long for anything involving uh, household electricity to turn into an ouchy hurdy situation very quickly. Secondly, no doubt some of the more seasoned amongst you, some of the people who work as electricians professionally that watch my videos, are probably shouting foul right now over some of the things that I'm doing, like running 220 volts on this little AC 110 volt 15 amp cord set. I'm not particularly concerned about this because number one, I don't run the fan for very long this way, and also the fan does not pull very hard. It has about a steady state draw of about 175 watts, so it's by no means pushing things too hard to be safely carried on a 15 amp cord set. So anyway, like I say, your own safety is the most important thing. If you end up dying, you kind of can't get your life back, so don't do anything stupid and don't take unnecessary chances. Leave that to the professionals. <laughs> so let's get started on this thing. Now, as far as the speed I'm going to use, I've got this fan wired to run on the high speed. My choices are red for low, yellow for medium low, uh, blue for medium high, and of course black for full speed ahead. And I determined that purely by experimentation because the speeds are not listed on the motor. Given that this thing came from a restaurant, I also had to clean an absolute ton of food grease and related filth out of it. It was just unbelievable how icky this fan was. And so in, in lack of a better option, for lack of a better option, I just went ahead and I took this motor and this fan assembly all apart 
and then I took them to the car wash and I blasted them with high pressure water and then I set them in the sun for about a week to let them dry out. You couldn't even see the original blades in here. Now these are kind of rusty looking because it's been a couple years since I got this fan and I probably ought to take this fan cage out of here and sandblast it and paint it so it wouldn't rust but these things were black with food grease and you couldn't even see things like the the little counterweights and stuff that are in here and all that good stuff. Now in order to work properly a fan like this needs an airflow restriction on its output otherwise the little motor will sit in labor and not get up to speed and it'll draw a silly amount of current and it will probably also overheat none silly of which is very good. <laughs> silly amounts of current. So the key keeper being the helpful kind of guy that he is he brought me, hang on, don't go anywhere with that. Um, he brought me a piece of cardboard, and because Airsoft factors into everything he's doing these days, he also gave me an Airsoft target, and it says right down here, Bullseye Soda, which means you must, if you score a Bullseye, you must get a Pepsi. So did you score a Bullseye? <laughs> That reminds me of my uh, years in Cub Scout day camp where for the first and only time in my life the camp director said he would eat a jalapeno pepper pickle if I managed, if anyone managed to shoot a bullseye at the BB gun range. And to this day I have no idea how I did it, but I scored a bullseye. And the guy was true to his word, but he gave me the dirtiest look ever. But rather than sit and bore you with uh, not so entertaining anecdotes, Go ahead and turn this on here and you can see how the motor labors and won't get up to speed at all properly. You can also hear the fan grazing the framework. Now let's put a flow restriction on the output and you'll notice the difference. Let's go ahead and install that with the handyman's secret weapon. Duct tape. Yes, indeed. Yes, sir. Silly man to current. Spot weld that on. <laughs> oh, we well, use silly amounts of current to spot weld that on. Why don't you go get the battery out of the big brown piece of crap? <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes, and we'll be welding in no time. There, look at that. Shazam! A little bit of duct tape and some cardboard and Bob's your uncle. Actually, Bob's my grandfather, but that means something will probably go horribly wrong and catch on fire here. There we go. That's a lot better. Not quite perfect. Not building quite as much pressure as I need to because I don't have a seal up there. Go ahead and try some of the other speeds and see if I can't maybe seal that up a little bit better than it is. <laughs> her name was Sal. Fifteen miles on, on the Erie Canal. Canal. Miles years. Good old work in a good Who knows? old pal. Fifteen years on the Erie Canal. Around this year. <laughs> I'll tell you what, one of these days the copyright police, they're going to get us for music. They are. We've hauled well, no, 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 no. I've been working on the railroad all the live long day. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's so bad. <laughs> Look on the Aren't you glad the camera does not have a very good microphone right about now? <laughs> oh man. Okay, here we go. Try that again. Hmm, that duct tape's swelling up like a balloon. I wonder if it'll explode. But there it is on high speed. No, it won't blow that away. Wait a minute, that's what the target's for. Well, maybe. Whee! All right, let's try one of the other speeds. Here's the low speed startup. Probably look better from this side. You can see more of the fan. Nice and quiet. Perfect restaurant volume. Now I've got the medium low speed hooked up. That's the yellow wire up there. See how that sounds.
for the medium high or blue wire. <laughs> I think it just got the bizarre furhead seal of approval. Oh! Let me turn that back on. You know, if we're gonna lie on video, I ought to at least do a convincing job. <laughs> and then finally, the high speed. Bizarre furhead's back over here with me. He's not that brave. <laughs> hey, don't get blown away this time. I'm, I just might. This thing might make one hell of a good salad shooter. <laughs> just throw a head of lettuce in there and shazam! I just figured out our squirrel problem. <laughs> our bird feed it. You, you glue bird feed to the propellers, in comes squirrel, and shazing! Squirrel sausages! I don't think so. <laughs> I'm not optimistic that could ever work. <laughs> hey, talk about cold cut. There you have it, folks. One small 220-volt squirrel cage fan demonstrated for your viewing pleasure.